Hey guys, I'm Melissa and welcome back to my channel. I hope you are doing well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you four mental and emotional superpower qualities that will make you unstoppable. Now you know I am all about inspiring and helping other people create their dream lives. The life that you know is inside of you to live. The life that when you close your eyes and you imagine that all limitations are dropped, you imagine that there's nothing stopping you, that no one's opinion is going to hold you down, and that you know that you have what it takes to, to be your best and live your best life. I want to help you create that life. And it takes strength. It takes emotional and mental willpower, discipline, and certain mental and emotional tools, which I'm going to share with you today. These are four of them that I've identified. Obviously, there are many more, but these are, I believe, the top four. And the first one is courage. Anytime that you set out to make a change, to do something different, to maybe swerve from the norm and from what other people expect from you, maybe from what you've believed is your limit, then it's going to take courage. You're going to have to take a risk. And that risk might be uh, an emotional and a mental one, meaning taking action despite the fact that the people closest to you may judge you, may try to convince you otherwise, may tell you that you're foolish for even trying this. You might have to take a financial risk. You might have to take a, a risk with making a really big move that's scary. Maybe you'll have to quit the current job that you have right now. Maybe you'll have to just put yourself out there in a way that is so scary. But courage is so very necessary if you want to create that life that you really dream of in your heart. And I've you know, experienced and shared with you many of my experiences with having to be courageous. You know, even with this YouTube channel, I've shared that experience a lot and how, you know, I wanted to create a channel for years, but I was so nervous to put myself out there. You know, anytime you push yourself past what you're comfortable doing and what you see the people around you doing, it is beyond scary, but that's where the reward is. That's where the emotional reward of saying, oh my goodness, I did this, I feel fantastic, I'm so proud of myself. That's where the financial rewards come from because you actually took that leap of faith and put in that work, took the action despite your fears. And all of the other rewards that you want are on that other side of fear. And so courage is just something that I encourage you to develop and it happens one day at a time, one choice at a time. So, you know, it's not something where you say all of a sudden, I'm this courageous person and I'm fearless. It is one decision. It's when you feel the pit in your stomach saying, oh no, no, I'm not gonna start that website. Oh no, no, I'm not ready to do this yet. Oh no, no, I can't, you know, call that president of that company because I'm only little old me and that person is, you know, this huge superstar who they're not gonna wanna talk to me. But when you, push past that fear and you take those steps, one courageous step at a time, before you know it, you are in this completely new life that you've built for yourself. And it really does feel fantastic. So that is number one, the emotional quality of courage. And I'm referring to my handy dandy notes here. The second quality is adaptability. It is the ability to change to pivot because when you are not in a cookie cutter situation where your life is just planned out for you and you're just following the next step, you have to be adaptable. You have to be willing to roll with the punches, so to speak, because there are going to be things that are completely unexpected and you can't let that rattle you. Like, so for example, if you you know, start a business. You can plan as much as you want to plan. You can organize things. You can write lists. You can be the best time manager of all time, but things will happen that are unexpected. You know, dealing with other people means you're dealing with other personalities and what that can bring to the table. Dealing with uh, unforeseen experiences. You know, you have to be able to say, hey, this isn't working, I need to pivot and try this and see if this works. Or, you know, these 
relationships aren't working in my life anymore. I thought they were going to be a forever thing, but they are toxic in my life. I need to be willing to let go of those relationships and being able to just have, and again, the courage comes into that, but being able to have the courage to be adaptable. So being able to just say, no matter what happens, I will be okay. You know, you can't, if you're, if you're seeking that security all of the time and you think that security is the, is the answer, you are limiting yourself to all of the other possibilities, all of the other options that could potentially bring great rewards in your life. And so just being willing to say, hey, I never thought I would move to Phoenix, Arizona in my example, but an opportunity came and it felt right. So we did it. And so maybe it's going to take, you know, maybe it's going to be something totally new for you and it's going to be scary, but being able to just change and adapt and go with the flow is so, so, so important. All right. Number three is the ability to simplify. Now, this was a big one for me, especially financially when I first, you know, quit my office job and pursued a career online, pursued something totally different than anyone that I've ever known in person. And not only did that take courage and the willingness to be adaptable, but it also took a willingness to simplify my life because my goal of creating this new life for myself was more important than any physical possession that I had. So I had to give up and I chose to give up shopping for frivolous things and certain expenses and being able to really downsize my budget and focus on only purchasing the essentials because the money that I had, the buffer that I had saved was for me to have the time and the months and even years to put toward my new online career that was so much more important to me. That's so much more than any physical stuff could be to me. And so being able to say like, and this comes, this is especially if your dream life includes being an entrepreneur, being a solopreneur, being someone who is starting their own business from home, whether it's selling physical products or, you know, selling services, being able to let go of the life that you used to have. Maybe you used to spend a bunch of money on getting your hair done, getting your nails done, um, going shopping to de-stress and, you know, buying things that you didn't really end up using. Having to, you know, it's very important to be able to look at that and say, you know what, this stuff isn't as, as important to me as the life I'm trying to create. So I'm willing to downsize. I'm willing to let go. And um, also in this category of being able to simplify and let go comes letting go of the people in your life who are toxic to your well-being. And it's very challenging to do that. I've made several videos on that topic that I recommend you checking out if that is something that you feel is really going on right now in your life because it can really derail all of the positive efforts that you're making if you are then choosing to pick up the phone and have a two hour conversation every night with the same people who are really disapproving of your lifestyle, really not supportive of your goals, really gossiping about you and just draining your precious mental and emotional energy that you need to work on all of the beautiful things that you're creating in your life. So that's something else that's important to be willing to let go of. Also letting go of your own excuses, letting go of your fears, letting go of the habits that are very negative in your life. Maybe you have to take an honest look at yourself and saying, you know what? I'm drinking way too much alcohol. This is making me tired. It's not making me feel good. I'm lethargic all the time or I'm, I'm consuming way too much sugar and candy and fast food. This isn't good for me. I need to drop this if I'm going to become that ideal me that I so want to become. And so being willing to just let go of all that is so, so, so critical and very, very powerful. And last but last but not least is the quality of releasing your inner critic. To be able to silence that inner voice that is your own worst enemy, that, that part of us that so many of us have, where it is this voice that just tells you, you're being an idiot, 
you don't know what you're doing, you're not ready yet, you don't have what it takes, you're not good looking enough, you're not smart enough, you're not rich enough, you'll never be this, you'll never be that. That voice inside of your head is going to keep you stuck forever unless you do something about it. And I, I can't stress that enough. It, you, if you have this incessant voice that is belittling you, that is telling you lies about your capabilities and keeping you small, then no matter how much effort you take out there in the world, no, much, no matter how much action you take and you know hustling you do, it won't be able to counteract that inner voice that is really degrading you and derailing your best efforts. It's going to make you have to struggle that much harder to get the same results. You want to become your own best friend. This is something I talk about all of the time and it's, it's probably one of the things that I'm most proud of when it comes to my personal journey and the work I've done on myself is to become our own best friend like we were when we were children. You know when you were a little kid and you didn't even have that ability to criticize yourself yet? You just thought you were great and you didn't even compare yourself to others? You know when you're maybe three years old and you could just have scribbled on a paper and you think that that is like the Mona Lisa. You're so proud of your artwork. You want it displayed. You know, I, I don't know about you but I've always been very into like dancing and music. I used to put on performances for my parents and their friends when they'd come over. I would listen to the Spice Girls and have dance routines because I was proud of myself because I thought I was fantastic and I assumed that everyone else would think I was fantastic as well. And there's a big part of you inside that still has that craving to return to that inner, completely, unconditionally loving self inside you. And I hope that you have the courage to connect with that part of you because that is your biggest asset. You being your own ally and being your own cheerleader in life is going to be the biggest asset that you can have. I guarantee it. Because no matter what happens, when someone tells you you're not good enough, that voice in your head says, that's not true. You know you're good. You know you're capable. You know you can learn any skill. You're incredible. Having that voice, I'm not talking about ego. I'm not talking about superiority. I'm talking about pure self-love. And just, you know, and I, and I use the example of talking to yourself like you are your best friend because, you know, when you think of someone who you really respect and love and the person that you want the best for in life, how do you speak to that person? When they're having a bad day, do you tell them that they're an idiot and they're stupid and they're worthless and they're never going to make any money, they're never going to lose weight, they're never going to meet the right person for them? No, you don't talk to them like that at all. But that's how harsh we can be with our own inner selves. And that's the only thing that's keeping us in this cycle of not wanting to take action, of being fearful, is because we're believing the voice that is telling us these things. And so if you actually just slow down when you're feeling that resistance come up and you feel yourself just feeling anxious and negative and fearful, slow down and maybe picture someone who is a best friend and think, if this person was going through this right now, how would I talk them out of that fear? How would I talk them out of all of that negativity? How would I convince them of how lovely and amazing and capable they are? And you can do this through journaling practices. You can do this through literally looking in your own eyes in the mirror. It's something that I very strongly recommend. It's mirror work is life changing. Um, you can Google Louise Hay positive affirmations and Louise Hay mirror work. It's something that she was famous for teaching because of you know how powerful it really can be. And I'm going to leave it at that for today's video. I, I hope that you really take the step to at least develop one of these four superpower qualities. I hope that one of them that like stands out to you, if, if even only if one of them really was like, wow, that is something that I, that I could work on. I can see how I can apply that to my life. I hope that you take the step, take one step today, an action step, and push yourself out of your comfort zone. Maybe it is doing mirror work. Maybe next time you go wash your hands and you're in the bathroom, you look up in the mirror and you say, hey, you're beautiful. You're, you're doing a great job at work today. 
you're an amazing friend. You're an amazing person. And you know, just speak kindly to yourself. Or if it is that you call up someone that you're afraid to call, or you apply for a job that you don't feel that you're quite ready for, but you push yourself out of that comfort zone. All right, I am going to put all of the notes from this video in the description box. And I hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Also, I'd love to let you know, I'm very excited to let you know that I am now offering one-on-one -on -one phone call dream life coaching sessions. And this is something that I'm really excited about. I've been doing it for a while with a select few clients and I've been really, really enjoying it. They've been seeing fantastic results and there's nothing that makes me happier than being able to help others to create their dream life. And so whether that means that you need some clarity defining what exactly your dream life looks like, maybe it's your dream life career and you don't know how to put it into words. You need help setting specific goals and taking consistent action toward it. Or if it's that you need accountability and you need some tips and tools to really keep you on track. Or if it's the self-love aspect of creating your dream life and you're thinking, hey, I've got a fantastic career, a fantastic relationship, and all of this stuff that's going well for me, but it is that I need work on that inner voice and I need help getting to that next level of loving myself and dropping the things that are holding me back. I am so excited. Obviously, I can only take a limited amount of people because my time is limited, but um, if this is something that you're interested in, I will put information in the description box of this video as well and you can visit melissaalexandria.com to get a little bit more information. All right, have a fantastic day. I will see you next time, and I love you. Bye.